I'm Michelle. Today I'm in Narita City, Tokushima Prefecture. Today I'd like to introduce you to a Takumi who makes tiny LED lights that emits ultraviolet rays invisible to the human eye. Let's go and find out how it's used. Here we are in Naruto, well known for its huge tidal whirlpools. It is also home to a venture capital firm that has succeeded in developing ultraviolet LEDs. Hello, it's nice to meet you. I'm Michelle. Hello. Our Takumi or innovator is Yoshihiko Muramoto. We went straight in to see the ultraviolet LED Muramoto developed. This is an ultraviolet LED product. Each one is an LED. There are 100 here in all. What seems like tiny glass balls are the ultraviolet LEDs or light emitting diodes. When it is galvanized with electricity, it emits a blue colored light. It can't be seen with the naked eye, but the light includes ultraviolet light. But what use is an ultraviolet light that you can't even see? Muramoto produced something from the envelope he was holding. Paper currency from around the world. When he shone an ultraviolet light over the bills, a design suddenly appeared. A special ink that reacts and changes color under ultraviolet light is used to see if the bills are genuine. Taking advantage of ultraviolet light's ability to make certain inks glow, it is being used in anti-counterfeiting, product labeling and in many other areas of our lives. However, the conventional lamps and fluorescent lights that were being used to produce ultraviolet light had disadvantages. They didn't last long and used a lot of power. By replacing them with LEDs, they last over 100 times longer, and so they also save energy. LEDs can reduce electricity costs by over 80 percent. They are also friendly to the environment because they don't contain mercury and other pollutants. Until now, creating ultraviolet LED light was considered to be technically challenging. This is the mechanism by which LEDs emit light. LEDs are made by bringing two semiconductors together. One has too few electrons and the other has too many. When an electric current is sent through the junction of the two, it releases energy in the form of photons and emits light. The color of the light emitted is determined by the material that is used to make the semiconductor. To produce shortwave ultraviolet light, it was known that you could mix a chemical compound of gallium and nitrogen with aluminum. But this resulted in poor conversion of light from including the aluminum. What solved the problem was some out-of-the-box thinking. Ultraviolet light has a short wavelength. Muramoto tried adding indium, which emits long wavelength light. He found to his surprise that it could produce ultraviolet light without reducing its light conversion efficiency. It's just a combination of conventional technologies. But by combining them in a new way, even though in theory it shouldn't have worked, in fact, that's what made it work. And now, ultraviolet LED is gaining worldwide attention, especially for use in lighting. The white LED flashlight in common use today is in fact a blue LED filtered through a yellow phosphor coating to make it look white. Using this technology though, the light still looks somewhat bluish.
In contrast, this is a white light produced using ultraviolet LED. Ultraviolet light is shone onto a phosphor coating comprising the three primary colors, red, green, and blue. Due to the strong photon energy of the ultraviolet light, all three colors in the coating are activated, achieving a white light. There are high hopes for the development of an LED as white as a conventional light bulb, but with LED's greater energy efficiency. Bramoto turned what was thought to be impossible into reality. He explains. It is within accepted theories that we are able to find innovative new ones. We need to work hard and keep at it to develop something new. We shouldn't just accept existing theories, but question them in the pursuit of something new. That is what I believe.